Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Big Day Chart. I'm Jasmine here with my co-host, Christina Mayer. Hi, Christina. Hello, Jasmine. How are you this evening? I'm doing okay. I'm ready to get into this conversation we're about to have because I feel like <laughs> it's a good one. I am really excited too because I feel like um, I always like it whenever we have an opportunity to share kind of like both sides of what happens, um, the reactions whenever something happens at work. And I think that we can um, share some fresh stories about being on the delivery side and on the receiving side of this and point people in the right direction or a better direction at mm -hmm. least than what we've seen and experienced. <laughs> And haven't we seen some good old stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so tonight we are talking about a two weeks notice. Quitting your job. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> I've never seen that movie. I just know that part of the song. <laughs> oh, well, I feel like you should see that movie. It's kind of cute. It's cute. I haven't seen the second one. I only saw the first one, but. But I'm with you. Let it go. And and you know what? And we love to celebrate leaving the toxic workplace. So tell love us it was it. toxic. And we are there throwing a party, but we will bake you some stuff. We will get you back. No, we won't get you baked because you're going to have to take a drug test, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we will celebrate exiting a toxic workplace for sure. I, I, I have no idea why we would do that, but we would. <laughs> <laughs> really yeah okay so, so jasmine tell yes. us um the last time you gave your your two-week notice how did it go down <clears throat> so i was nervous i'm always okay let me take that i'm not always nervous about giving my two weeks notice i can think of one that i was just like look this ain't working out here you go so <laughs> i feel like i know which one you're talking about but okay <laughs> So um, I was extremely nervous about um, this two weeks notice that I'm talking about. And I was like on the fence of if I wanted to give a full two weeks, did I just want to give a week? Did I just want to be like, look, I need some time to like clear my mind before I start a new job. So I'm gonna just bounce today. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. I don't think. Um, My office is packed. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Basically. Um, but so I gave my notice and I knew leadership knew about it, but no one said anything. I take that back. One of the top leaders said, okay, well, the position needs to be filled. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question. So when we're talking about leadership in that role that you're using as this example, how many layers removed are you from reporting to that person? One. <laughs> and they didn't come talk to you? Uh -uh. I mean, what? Why leaders? Why are you like that? Oh, we, you know what? We're going to stop calling you leaders. We use that phrase <laughs> and I know why we use that phrase, but you're just like, you're a manager and you're not a good one because you have to still treat people like humans when they're leaving your organization. Mm -hmm. And I, you know what I've coached, I've coached managers through this so many times throughout my career that, you know, your first reaction is to take it personal. Granted, sometimes managers should probably take it personal and do some self-reflection and figure out, hey, how could I have prevented this? But in that moment, when you feel yourself taking it personal, you can't give the other person your reaction. You have to put on, you know, a professional face and you have to carry this out in a professional manner. You can't just be like, oh, I'm mad. I'm not going to go talk to her she reports directly to you i i need you to fill that position immediately okay no discussion about why she's leaving where she's going no discussion between those two people maybe about how they could have prevented this before they go and find the, the replacement because hello that's something to consider whenever you're going to backfill somebody's position when they leave but I think people wait on the exit reviews to do so if their organization um, has an exit review. If I do think you didn't even come talk to me, you think I want to do your stupid exit review? I do. 
I, I, I do. <laughs> okay. Um, I know. I feel like it's easier. <laughs> it's easier to because for me, when I'm not not every organization, but when so much stuff has piled on. And I know the specific reasons of why I'm leaving this organization. And it has, you know, not a lot to do with like the money, especially not the title or anything like that. Um, Sometimes I don't feel like I can have a conversation with you. So I'm going to use the exit survey to let you know how I truly feel. Um, So like when it comes to, you know, diversity at the organization, like if I feel like I've already had so many conversations with you and I feel like that you don't grasp what I'm telling you about diversity in your organization and the lack thereof, then I'm going to just, you know, put it to paper and be like, look, I left because you don't value the employees, you know, the brown and black employees that you have in your organization. So that's one of the reasons why I left. Um, Yeah. I think it's a little easier for that. I see what you're saying. And I support that because I feel like, especially since you've voiced concerns in that scenario already and they were dismissed um, and excused and explained away and all of these other um, uh, pathetic excuses of responses, then yeah, once you're here, like, another conversation is probably not going to help. And especially when you're at the point where you have nothing to lose because you've already put in your resignation and you don't want to act out on your way out and give them an opportunity to say, well, she's not eligible for rehire with us because that happened or to start spreading that through, especially through our local HR community. I think that kind of, information can spread quickly um whether they have a policy that they you know answer anything other than dates of employment on an employment verification or not so I don't know I don't know why people are like that so tell us your story because I remember you telling me this story um so tell us your story okay so the last time I gave my two-week notice I was super stressed out about it. I, um, I wasn't looking for a new job. I knew I was going to look for a new job eventually, but I wasn't ready. And so the timing felt incredibly bad. And I remember I was supporting a really big project for the organization that had already been rescheduled because of somebody else's like exit of the organization, which was Mm -hmm. really a termination. Um, (laughs) And so I felt like, oh my gosh, we've worked so hard to get this project to the finish line. I need to stay here until it's across the finish. Like they're going to be so mad at me when I put in my notice. Yeah. The, the job that I was about to accept was way more in my lane. It was um, the kind of challenge that I was looking for to get me like more engaged in work again. It was better pay. It was better benefits. It was a better location. I mean, it was all around like the right thing to do. But I remember over the weekend, I got my offer on a Friday. And so um, over the weekend, I just kept like reading over everything. And I was just like, oh my God, how am I going to tell them? How am I going to tell them that I'm putting my two weeks notice? Like, I don't know what to do. (laughs) Like I was pacing. I was sweating I was praying I was calling all (laughs) y'all I don't know how to handle this um I wrote my resignation letter and I remember like I closed it several times and like opened it again and I was just like oh god this is gonna be so so bad and so uh, we had um a Monday morning meeting on like it was every two weeks and so it was the Monday that we were having that morning meeting and I was like, okay, I've got to tell my boss before we go into that morning meeting. And also I was afraid if I didn't tell her really quickly that I was going to chicken out on telling her to her face. Cause I just knew like she was going to be so bad. I mean, I was so stressed over the weekend. So I remember sitting across from her and I, re- I, didn't, I didn't like to her as the boss, you know, and I didn't want to disappoint her and I didn't want to make her mad, but like, yeah. I also couldn't stay any longer. And I gave her the letter and I I told her I was putting in my two week notice and like, 
she didn't even flinch. And she was like, okay, okay, okay. You know, like she wasn't, she wasn't surprised and it wasn't a big deal to her. So um, she seemed completely unfazed. And, and that was such a like, duh moment for me. So I walked back to my office, which was right next to her office and the walls, they were like paper thin. But like, I could tell she picked up the phone and, and she was calling somebody. And I thought, oh my gosh, she just like, she didn't miss a beat. And I, I spent my entire weekend stressing about turning in my notice. So I'm like, okay, everyone's going to know. They're going to tell everyone in this staff meeting. I need to go to staff meeting. So I went to staff meeting. Nobody says a word. We don't talk about it. They don't ask me if I want to tell everybody. We just go on about our regular business. And I thought, wow, that was really strange. Maybe she hasn't had a chance to tell the president yet, whose mm -hmm. office was on the other side of her office. So that was really unlikely that she hadn't, that she didn't immediately tell him. So then uh, a whole day goes by and the president, who again is two doors down from me, has not said a word to me, a word. There were 13 of us in this office. It's no, he, he had to walk past my office to go to his office after he would come back from the restroom. He never said a word to me. In fact, a restroom, lunch, a break. <laughs> it, yeah, anything. Any, like if he left that office for any reason, he walked past my office. My door was always open and he didn't say a word. And then my immediate supervisor came back into my office later I was like, okay, I called your customer and, you know, they think this person can handle it. So we just wanted to make sure. And I was like, you call, I can't even tell my customers. <laughs> I can't tell my customers. Nobody wants to talk about it here. I was like, this is weird. This is very weird. And so my last two weeks were totally awkward because they set the tone for like, not acknowledging it, not acknowledging me. You better believe they wanted me to work my fingers to the bone in my last two weeks though. And so that just really put the whole process into perspective for me as an employee, um, you know, kind of similar. Like I know, I know that it's the organization's priority to backfill a position whenever somebody turns in their resignation, right? We work in HR and recruiting. We've seen it. We know that that's the next step internally as an organization but you still have to engage with people and treat them like people on their way out. And this is their last experience with the organization. You want them to be like, man, they treated me so well all the way out the door. I would recommend anyone go work for them. You know, if, if, if your skills are a fit for this organization, they are gonna be good to you. But it sounds like neither one of us in our examples had that kind of experience. So how many people do you think we're gonna refer? Or maybe you're treating us like that because you don't want our referrals. I don't know. That's fine. That's fine. My referrals are top tier. Okay. You want my referrals. My referrals just don't want you. <laughs> L it. Because it's true. Because it's true. But if you can't, as a manager, if you can't set those feelings aside, and go have a conversation and say, you know what? I appreciate everything you did for us. Sad to see you go. Wish you well in your new job. That's all you have to say to really turn this situation around. So I think my advice to employers is to encourage leadership in the management chain to acknowledge a resignation. Don't ice someone out. Uh, don't, and you know what? And I remember, God, I almost said his name. Uh, the president, he said to me, well, I wanted to give you time to, uh, you know, I didn't know if you would be, how you'd be feeling. Oh boy, I gave you my notice. My time is, I'm trying to get through the day without cussing all y'all out and telling y'all how I truly feel. That's the only time I need. So, right, right. You, guys say wanted, goodbye. you guys made me want to <laughs> just like walk out like the same day that I turned in my resignation, I, I was so, so stressed about that project. So stressed. And I tried so much to get my new employer to let me give a three week notice instead of a two week notice. And they were like, no, we need you now. Da, 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 da. So I gave the standard two weeks. And so I said to my boss, like, I'm really sorry that that means like 
I won't be able to close this project out. I really tried. And she was like, oh, no big deal. We'll just get somebody from the consulting firm to take your spot. What? Not what? rude that is. <laughs> okay. You know, like I don't need you to coddle me or anything, but I was just like, man, I, I want, I want you to know this was a tough decision for me because I didn't want to leave y'all in the lurch. And you're like, we're fine. Goodbye. Whatever. We don't need to. That's why y'all still suck, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> so as you know, our advice to employers is engage, be respectful, be kind. You don't have to make stuff up, but you can be kind and say something general. Like I gave the example of, and for employees, you know, like don't, don't waste an entire weekend stressing over something that the organization is just going to be like, meh, goodbye. And even if you are nervous about them coming back with a counter offer, one, I don't believe in counter offers. <laughs> um, maybe it's just from my experiences, but two, also you still you're still in control of it. If, if that's something that you truly want to consider, you are still in control of that, and you are the one that gets to say, okay, well, let me take you know a day and and truly think about how I feel about that. So do not. It, it is easy for us to say after we didn't sit up here and told y'all that we didn't waste an entire weekend nervous about giving a two weeks notice, but seriously, don't sit up there. Shame and, of it. I'm ashamed look, of it now. Look, like, I have a stay ready folder. Okay. It has a kind of made up notice. It has my resume. <laughs> Hold like, on y'all. My light done. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's something about the lights tonight. We ain't, no, nah, we ain't doing that. Okay, <laughs> tell me about this stay ready folder. <laughs> so I have a stay ready folder. So it has a notice, um, like a generic, you know, notice that I can fill in information to. I have my resume um, already prepared. I have, you know, like different versions of my resume um, already prepared. Like I have a at certain organizations, like I have a transition file of the things that I know I'm going to need to transition over to someone else. Like okay. sometimes you have to be ready. Listen, I'm not mad about this and stay ready file. <laughs> I'm not mad about it. It's pretty good. It's kind of like, I was thinking about how um, my role, I have like, if I can't box my office up in five minutes or less, I have too much uh -huh. personal stuff in my office. Nope. <laughs> This is like next level. I like it. So put those two things together and listen, you gotta, you gotta also have an FU fund. Okay. An FU fund so that when people treat us like that, we can be like, you know what? We're not working on doing notice. Holla. <laughs> so we are starting a little series um, to talk about quitting jobs. And we decided to start with the two week notice conversation tonight. Um, so uh, definitely make sure you are following us on Instagram at Baked HR. Um, make sure that you comment and like and subscribe to the Baked HR YouTube channel. Tell us about, you know, your two weeks notice. Do you have a stay ready file? Are you able to clean out your desk in five minutes or less? <laughs> Um, <laughs> and have you ever timed it? Have you ever practiced it and timed it? <laughs> that would be a good way. Um, and just send us a email if you have a topic suggestion that you want to see us talk about or something that you want us to discuss at bakehr at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> it died again. I'm not with it. Okay. Good night. Thanks for coming. Bye bye. Bye y'all.